um, believe it or not, in the first place, um, it would, I can see benefits, but the, the government has expert advisers and it would be good for us to see some of that advice as well, if that was possible. I'm, I'm sure that could be arranged through, through the Mayor. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I've seen any independent source of advice. I know from talking to the Minister, he has listened to a range of stakeholders, but his officials, uh, MB officials and Department of Environment officials, Ministry for the Environment officials, have been involved in discussions with, with Council. So they, we're working on the same basic set of information. Uh, he's wanting to explore this as he explains it to me. I think that's a valid position. I think the advantage, the obvious advantage is, of course, that you wouldn't need to take the Halsey Street Wharf out as far as it is at the moment. The disadvantage is, if we keep winning it, it would interfere with that linear park that goes from the headland down to down to the street there, Councillor. And I'm quite, I'm quite keen for I that th park to I go I think ahead. people would prefer um, yacht bases rather than high-rise office buildings, to be honest. But uh, I'm, the, talking, uh, I'm talking about the linear park. The headland park itself is on the headland, Mr yeah, Mayor. But the linear park goes to the headland, and I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. OK, um, we've gone through the questions. Uh, Ross, Ross. Oh, sorry, Ross, uh, didn't see you there. Councillor Clay. Um, in relation to follow-up to Councillor Lee, just, just um, if, if we were to look at that when you point and we put a breakwater in, I mean, what does that do as a legacy? for us. I mean, it's going to have two ramifications, as you would probably end up with the uh, yacht facilities and boat facilities on that side of Wynyard, which is not necessarily what we want to do long term, and then what does it do to any proposed uh, extension of the West Haven, uh, which is supposed to be going out, you know, uh, another whatever, 50, 100 metres. It's just going to really have huge ramifications for that whole um, yeah, area there. Can you just comment on that? I know we know we discussed this briefly last time you were here. Thank you, Councillor. The, um, the breakwater on Wynyard Point, we believe, will um, create a legacy, as I mentioned earlier, providing that sheltered water space, which would improve berthage for, for smaller vessels coming into that space, um, fishing vessels, working vessels, um, pleasure craft. And we don't really have that, uh, that at present. Um, the outer end of Wynyard Point, um, we have made provision for the existing um, uh, fuel supply ship can still, still berth on the warfare, so it's not impacting any of that existing business. Um, I'm not quite sure what you refer to on the, on the West Haven extension. There is going to be a, an extension and set down to extend that, is my understanding. We have a project called the, 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 the Palm Mooring Project, which is a continuation of the breakwater and provision of some um, marina berthage to replace the palm moorings. Yeah, that's the tightens, project you're referring to. Tightens it up. Yeah. But the long-term plan is not for us to really necessarily have boat stocking on that side, is it? <coughs> Part of our um, vision with the park. No, no, the, the, there's always been the vision that this is uh, the working waterfront and that working boats would continue to come into North Wharf, Halsey and, and Wynyard, Wynyard Point. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, look, we'll now move for um, a discussion around the recommendations. Uh, having finished questions, so uh, happy to take any uh, comments from councillors. I've got my name down here. Uh, Councillor yeah. Walker. Sure. Uh, this will be, we'll, we'll keep strictly to the five minute limit and we'll give people the ballot four and a half minutes if you feel the need to go that long. And uh, my, my discussion is, is in the form of a, a question to uh, yourself, um, Mr Mayor, and that is around whether you would entertain a, a change to the recommendation and that change would be along the lines of a consenting process that enabled flexibility and in particular around flexibility so that we're able to pursue both um, options, the basin and the point option. And my reasoning around that is that I would suggest that that could involve less risk. It takes into account 
the unknown number of syndicates, scale of um, syndicates, and it would and could well meet concerns of many Aucklanders around the extension into the Gulf of an additional distance. So my question is whether you would entertain uh, that, and that might involve a little more advice from um, officers, and that option might also entertain the uncertainty around Site 18 and the uncertainties, but the opportunities around that. Uh, I, I can give you a quick answer now if, if that's convenient and it will be quick. I, uh, I, I might, if it were possible, I've raised this question already with officials and I'm told that for reasons of timing in particular, uh, council resources, but also the extra expenditure probably running uh, chief executive into millions rather than hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, that, that that is not a possibility, particularly given the time. If, if this was... Uh, uh, over a much longer time frame, it might be something that could be contemplated. But if, if the time that that could take would rule out the ability to, to have the site prepared for when it is needed, then obviously it would be self-defeating. Um, so I, I have a question around that then. Is there any information that you can present us about the figure that you mention in the millions, and, and this is around the consenting process I'm referring to, just the consenting process around this option. Right. Yeah. And if you have had discussions around that, and I'm assuming that if there are discussions, there is information, can we not have that information tabled so that as councillors, and we are involved with this decision, that we're also on the same playing field as you in terms of making a decision that's informed. Okay. Can, could I ask Fiona to comment on that? She's been dealing directly with sure. it. Sure. Through you, Mr Chair. So the, the figures that we've come up with, they're a reflection of the work that we've done to date in terms of um, the location. So then, obviously, um, based on the 23rd, we, um, we're doing more work around detailed design. Um, there's a lot now with the preparation of the consent, there's lots of technical work, legal work that needs to go into preparing the consent. And then once the consent is lodged, there's a six month process in terms of hearings and, and, and evidence creation, all that type of thing. So from a planning, legal, operational point of view, that's quite a significant amount of money. A and additional to that is time and of staff resource as well. Okay, through you, Mr. Chair. So, I've, sorry, I've just can, got I, a, can I just. A further question that, yeah, for yeah, you yeah, that no, goes I'm, to that. I'm, I'm happy. This, this is slightly irregular, Councillor, because we've had questions and we've moved on, but I'm trying to be helpful <laughs> to you. Uh, we have our legal counsel here, James Hess. I'll just ask him to come forward and explain the, the, the constraints in terms of time, because I think that's the, the critical issue that we're looking at, Councillor. Uh, James. Yes, so the, um, we're working within the, the standard resource management um, framework. We need to come up with, as we do with every uh, resource consent application, um, a proposal uh, which is worked through with a whole lot of uh, experts and legal input prior to going to um, the court uh, in one form or another. Uh, and then the court makes a decision on the, the proposal that um, is put in front of you. Everyone's working to try and make sure that that process is, uh, is done as quickly and as efficiently as, as possible. Um, yes, there are chances of, of appeal and um, um, judicial review, uh, but we deal with those um, on a regular basis. So I just have a question relative to this, mm -hmm. and that is the resource management process and the consideration around this requires us to examine alternatives. And I don't doubt that those alternatives will be raised through the consenting process by various parties. In addition to that, as far as the development on this um, car park is, is concerned, it's also conceivable that the consenting process around that goes to the later work that we're going to do, need to do around consenting for that anyway that uh, Councillor Lee has referred to. So is it, I mean, how much, how much are we talking about extra, really, when it comes down to it? 
One, given that we're going to need to consider other options anyway and explore those, and we'll be asked in some detail around those costs. And two, given that we're going to be making the changes around this area later anyway. And I'm referring to the car park here on Winyard Point. Um, again, the resource consent process is to consider a particular um, uh, project um, in developing uh, the alternatives, or sorry, in developing that uh, project um, as the pre-work, we uh, look at a whole lot of different um, options um, and um, those form part of the application. Um, but we can only work on you know, the particular project that we're dealing with. Um, it, it, it's, it's not part of the resource management process to, um, to uh, tweak things later on. I mean, if, if, if things are uh, changed in the future, uh, then there's the opportunity to go back and um, seek variations to um, consent. And again, you know, that's, that's a, a fairly regular um, a, approach to resource consents. Sure. Um, so how much, how much are we talking about extra in dollar terms for what I'm asking? Make this the last comment, please, Councillor. How much? The, the cost of, well, uh, let, let This me, is a question I'm asking yeah, to the officer. Can, can I try to clarify it, if I go back to the councillor's earlier point? Uh, one, is it possible, time-wise and resource-wise, to put forward two resource consents? And if you were to do that, how much extra would it cost for the second consent? Um, through you, I'm not talking about two resource consents, Mr Mayor, I'm talking about one. Well, it's, it's two, well, maybe you can clarify that as well, James, because what you're talking about is two alternative options rather than the one option. So if I, I'm imagining that would require two consents, but maybe it could be done as could alternatives. Have two consents. Perhaps you could clarify that too. Um, so, uh, I, I have uh, no, no knowledge of the, the, the costing for this. I mean, yes, it's always possible to, um, to uh, apply for two different consents, but of course it will require additional uh, funding to do that. Can I, could I just I'd, yeah, perhaps um, uh, close this one down? Um, there is the, you can obviously lodge more than one consent. If there are two options considered, um, uh, then you would need to take, take them both through, um, through the consenting process. I, I'd like to think that the work that's been done to date has considered all possible options. So I think we've arrived at a position um, apart from the, from the option that the Minister has um, requested some further investigation and is currently doing due diligence on. So I think um, while he does that, there is still the possibility that we can just uh, keep going and develop up this Wynyard Basin option for consenting. Now I think that the, the decision today is do we do that and do, we, do uh, Council provide Panuka with the mandate to continue with that work to meet the program. The, uh, the, the Minister still has the option to continue his due diligence and will reach a position, I'm sure, whether he, where he decides that the current track um, is satisfactory or he wishes to lodge a, a separate consent. So, through you, Mr Mayor, if the Minister said that he was interested in this, yeah. then we'd go with that. No. OK, I'll, I'll leave it there, that. Mr Sorry, Mr. I, 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 I'm, I didn't I'm still trying that. to get clarification to your answer on this, the, the, then I'm going to move to the next uh, call if there is one. Um, if I can ask the there Chief is. Executive to give you the same advice that he's given me in regard to the possibility of including the Wynyard variant in the consent, what would that mean in terms of our ability to meet time constraints, resource constraints and additional costs? So, thanks. Uh, Mayor Goff, so the advice we've given is that between now and the 15th of January we will be, we will be having to move significant resources through that holiday period to achieve the lodging of an application for your preferred site and we would not meet a 15 January deadline to put in um, a consent that contained two different options or a second consent. We don't have the funding, we don't have the resources, and we don't have the time. So it's really, it's actually quite simple. So the Minister and the Crown may decide to lodge an alternative consent. We do not believe they would be able to do that by the 15th of January, and that they will no doubt take that into account when they weigh that up. We don't have any more um, technical information to deliver 
to uh, the government officials that we're working with. We have finished that process and we, um, through the Mayor's office, emailed the report that you're looking at today to the Minister in Argentina. So he's got all of the information that you've got and I don't think he has any other information that we haven't seen because we've largely produced it all for him. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Uh, are there any other callers? Councillor Lee, then Councillor uh, Collins. Uh, 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 thank Councillor you. Councillor Watson. Um, again, I have to e express my concern um, about the late arrival or the, or, the, or the short time we've had to consider um, this paper and, and these recommendations, which uh, will have a, a profound impact and it's a pity because I don't believe we need to close off options at this stage. And I'm surprised to hear that the Auckland Council uh, can't um, lodge a resource consent for a pretty well-developed concept uh, as set out um, in these papers, namely the, the Winyard Point uh, option, which is favoured by the, the government. Um, hopefully the government um, we'll take a lead on this, but it's disappointing that the council um, is closing off options. Uh, I, I, I think that there are a number of aspects t to this. The um, strategic ap um, aspect, staying on strategy um, of developing this area and the Headland Park um, as a very special working uh, waterfront um, in Auckland. It seems to me by moving over for, for, and creating a, a significant reclamation or extension <coughs> on Halsey and Hobson, we are actually going off strategy and moving um, the, the centre of gravity away from the Winyard Quarter, whereas the government's option, is, in my view, and I've been involved in the strategy ever since we transferred the land from Ports of Auckland and set up C Plus City and then um, Waterfront Auckland. Uh, so the government seems to be more on strategy than we are, which is kind of ironic. Um, the other um, benefit and the strength of the minister's position is that he's listening to the people of Auckland, um, which is again kind of ironic because the, the minister originally uh, was a Dunedinite, um, a southern man who represented a southern electorate. But now um, he's a resident in Grey Lynn, part of my electorate actually, and he is clearly listening to the views of a lot of um, good people in Auckland for whom continued expansion um, into the harbour is a red line. And I really do think we have to listen to that sentiment. It's deeply held, passionately held, and even the Ports of Auckland, which um, is running a commercial operation on the waterfront, is, sig has signalled formally that it will no longer expand into the harbour. And we expect that of Ports of Auckland, but what is source for the goose should be source for the gander, but not apparently when it comes to the super city. Um, the Ports of Auckland have to toe the line, but apparently not the council. So, ironically, one of the, the, the base areas the government is, is, is looking at is, is a car park. And we've, we heard yesterday a lot of talk, or day before yesterday, a, a lot of pontificating about political interference in the commercial activities of the Ports of Auckland. And yet this council under this mayor has openly interfered in the ports of Auckland in regard to cars, telling ports of Auckland they shouldn't be importing cars. Now it's ironic because if you go to the um, Winyard Point and this area, there are hundreds of cars and even on Queen's Wharf. So w we need not to look at our own selves. Um, there's nothing worse than a double standard and I think um, the government's option is a sensible one, it's a sustainable one, and I think that we shouldn't be deliberately dismissing it. 
I think we need to work in partnership with the government. And apart from the views of Aucklanders as citizens, there's also their interests as ratepayers. The government will be also a funder of this event, and I believe we should respect our partner and listen to their views and not use bureaucratic mechanisms to shut their option down at this stage. Um, it, it doesn't make sense if we want the government to, which is made up of a whole lot of people from all around of New Zealand, to put money into this event, not just poor old Auckland ratepayers. Um, we need to be a little bit more respectful of, of the government's ideas. And actually, from someone who's been experienced in this area for quite some years, the government's views should be respected. They merit respect, spe respect because they are sensible and fair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Collins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir, after the last governing body meeting, we talked about this issue. I voted in favour of it. I was contacted by a number of my own constituents who invited me to reflect on the support that I offered in hosting and us uh, supporting uh, hosting the America's Cup. The officer came today and predicated his uh, discussion to the governing body on four drivers, cost, timeframes, delivery, and whether it can be fit for purpose. I've been reflecting on those four drivers this morning, reflecting on how that applies to those who are homeless in this city. 24,000 people, half a million dollars a year, and I don't feel the same level of urgency when we are trying to address homelessness as we are today in, a, in our support for hosting the America's Cup. So I've been reflecting on what my constituents have called and emailed me about and whether or not I should in fact be supporting this. And I'll say today that I will be voting against part A, which is to support a kind of a juxtapositioned name, Emirates Team New Zealand. Perhaps we should call it the United Arab Emirates Team New Zealand. And it's for those reasons when I've been contacted by the people in my constituency to reflect on why I'm supporting this, that I'll be withdrawing my support today and I'll be abstaining from parts B through to J or I uh, because I'm guessing it may go through and that means it'll allow those who need to do work to continue to do the work. I asked the question when we were discussing the 10-year plan, the long-term plan, about what are the key questions that drive and motivate us when we come to making the decisions. And I'll ask those questions again. How does the decision that we're making today facilitate social inclusion and cohesion for people out south where I come from who feel completely excluded? And is this just what they have said to me in their emails and their phone discussions with me, just a rich person's sport and all you're doing, Efesel, is nodding your head to it? I'm not convinced by the number of jobs that are going to be created out south, and even today there's been the question mark raised over whether in fact we have overestimated. There was one overestimation about something slightly different by 400%. So again, the economic argument for me has not been confirmed. When we last talked about this just a few weeks ago, there was a lot of nostalgia in the room. People remembering going up Queen Street, people putting on red socks, I believe. What about those? who can't afford red socks? What about those who are homeless and all we have committed to them is half a million dollars a year and I do not see the level of urgency that this table has committed to those people who might enjoy the America's Cup, but they certainly won't be watching it in the comforts of their homes. And it is for that reason that I will be voting against Part A and abstaining for the rest. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, I just want to confine my remarks to um, recommendation E. I think it still is E. Uh, I'll let Z on this sheet anyway. To note that the Crown remains committed to further investigating the Wynyard Point variant option and will not reach a final view until after due diligence um, on this option has been completed. I guess the thing about that that strikes me as a little unusual, and I, and I suppose it, it will do to um, many people taking an interest uh, in the discussion today, is that the government clearly has had access to exactly the same information as us. <laughs> um, the case presented to us, um, on the face of it, seems to be fairly overwhelming, we, and we're certainly um, getting led 
politely but pretty firmly down that path. So, so my, my question, my concern, and, I, and as I said, I think it'll be echoed by anyone listening today, is why, on the face of it, does the government, uh, if not uh, decidedly taking an alternative view, is certainly exploring uh, an alternative view um, with respect of this Winyard Point uh, option? Um, I, I'm assuming, um, but uh, I, I don't know if that assumption is correct, that, you know, that their view has been driven more by the environmental concerns that have been highlighted by uh, numbers of, uh, of people since our decision was, was made back in November, and that goes to the 75-odd metre extension to the Halsey Street Wharf and, um, and the consequent you know, effect on the, the quite uh, magnificent vista out into the Waitamata Harbour and across the Bayswater there. So um, we are left in this, this the rather invidious position, I think, because when, when I look at the Wynyard Point option and I listen to what the officer said in terms of the, the tyranny of time, but, but certainly also what was said in conjunction with the tyranny of time uh, was that uh, benefits could be de de delivered, more impressive benefits with that option, uh, legacy-wise, if, 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 uh, if we had more time. So the government is aware of the time pressure, so I, I assume. Um, they don't seem to be quite <coughs> so uh, impressed to, to act in the same way that we're being um, encouraged to, to do today. There is an old idiom, more haste, less speed, that doesn't seem to even be... Uh, considered uh, 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 relevant in our discussions today, that we have to make a decision, we have to make it now, and it has to be the one that we've stuck to. If this option had come to me uh, back in November, I think in all honesty, I, I, would, have, I would have been uh, steering towards this. This, this strikes me uh, in terms of the overall uh, considerations here, and I'm thinking particularly of the environmental considerations, to be one that, that meets that in the best way possible in terms of preserving, you know, the wider vista and, and, and I guess, our, our policy of not extending into the harbour. Um, I've seen some of the visualisations that uh, some of the groups have done of, of what this will look like at the end, and you'd, you'd have to say that it's, it's uh, not particularly photographic. I doubt if there'll be too many Japanese or American tourists there standing photographing these, these big sheds if they're, if they're to remain. Um, so, in the absence of, of Mr Parker's thoughts on this, because we don't really know in any detail what he's thinking, um, it's, it's a kind of uncomfortable position to be put into. Uh, I would really, it would have perhaps been useful if, if we'd had a little more of a, an insight into why they are taking the time, what points they are considering. Uh, are their views exactly the same on... Uh, the points that have been put across to us in terms of uh, public safety and accessibility, um, in terms of legacy benefits, in terms of the time frame. Is it the same in terms of the time frame? Because Councillor Darby uh, said at the start, uh, these figures that have come up that have been quite important figures in terms of um, estimates for uh, benefits from the cruise industry, and we've had the same sort of figures put up for the America's Cup in, in, in industry. Clearly, they uh, have been a little misguided, to say the least. Uh, is that same sort of uh, error or miscalculation perhaps being applied to aspects of, of this? I don't know. The, the officers have been very impressive, as always, in their presentations. But clearly, Mr Parker is, is thinking otherwise, or at least exploring that. So. I, I don't think we've got too much uh, room for manoeuvre in terms of what's been presented to us, Mr Mayor, but I'm really putting out a sense of unease with respect of the clarity of the government's thinking on this and the fact that their thinking on the face of it in terms of options is one that I steer more towards than, than the one that we've uh, endorsed to date. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Darby. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, so, um, at our last vote, I, um, I thought it was premature to express a preference, and I was a lonely vote against that one, but so be it. 
Uh, that being a preference uh, that was confirmed for the Wynyard Basin, smaller Halsey with um, Hobson being extended as well. Um, it's, it is refreshing actually to see the government uh, through